Hey, Seka. Yo, what's up? Can you do a guide for final boss, Gother? Dude, why are you playing with your cat? Good kitty. I'm waiting. Yeah, I can make a video for final boss, Gother, if you want. I mean, it's really not that bad. I know, I know you're waiting too. I just really need help. Dude, I'll get to it. Chill, bro. Hurry up already. All right, I'll do it right now. Yo, what's going on, guys? Sekabako here, bringing you another 7 Daily Sins Grand Cross video. For this, be going over final boss go through and giving you a preparation guide for uh, the fight, as well as some recommended units that you can use for the fight that may work out. So, what teams should I use? I'll be going over the details from that marble that they gave us, as well as the details that I have originally from the Japanese version, and some of the details for characters that you could potentially use in the fight. So, guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Alrighty guys, <laughs> alrighty guys. Uh, so we're gonna be going over the final boss go through preview and talking about a little bit, a little bit. And I'll be going over uh, my original guide for final boss go through and giving you guys some ideas of what to expect going into final boss go through. So for final boss go through, um, they have some instructions that they wanted to give us on the website here for the forum page. Uh, the final boss go through basic info: he's gonna be a strength attributes character and gonna be weak towards speed attributes. He's immune to all debuffs. To my recollection, he was not immune to all debuffs. He was actually um, you were actually able to debuff him, but what happened was when you debuffed him, the debuffs fell off on the following turn. That's what my recollection was. It could have been that way for the minions or just for him, but um, it, it's a little bit different. Also, this is much different than the previous uh, final boss where uh, you couldn't really kill the fodder and you actually can kill the fodder this time around. Okay, the difficulties, uh, hard, is going to be a recommended comics class of 100,000, extreme 130,000, and hell is going to be 150,000. For the purpose of this video, we're basically just going to be over hell and talking about that specifically because at this point in the game, a lot more people are going to be over 150,000 combat class and able to compete against this level. So, uh, important details. The boss is going to have deal extra damage against HP attribute enemies as well as demons. To give you an idea what that is, is HP attribute is all green characters that you have in your account, and demons are anybody including Meliodas that ha are of the demon race. That would be Meliodas, Galland, etc. Uh, those will all take 300% additional damage. Yes, you can beat the fight with those units. It is more difficult though, so I would definitely recommend being a little cautious by using those units. Uh, the first phase, final boss go through, is going to apply attack disable as well as have his attack increased based on the number of fallen allies. So what that means is you definitely do not want to kill these side fodder units in the first phase. They have, um, I, I'll have the HP values for you in the next screen for what HP values that they have, but definitely be very cautious on killing those guys. You can kill them and it is uh, a lot easier than you would think. Um, the attack disable does not happen every single turn. I believe it happens every other turn. And he also does skill D rank as well, uh, which is not mentioned here. That is another thing that he does that's very, very annoying. Uh, phase two, final boss go through is going to fully heal his allies, including himself, if a single one of them does not receive damage. Uh, so what that means is you have to use an area of effect attack again that hits every single unit on the enemy team. Uh, it cannot be patienced. It has to actually hit them. Uh, and then the boss will not regen. So if they, if you don't use an area effect card on that turn and the boss does not die on that turn, the boss will actually fully regen on his turn. As in, he'll go from say 20% HP all the way up to 100% HP if he was at super, super low. Yes, it is a full heal. Yes, it is annoying but it is a lot easier than Final Boss King, and I'll go over the details of why. Um, the tip is they recommend using speed attribute your characters with AoE attack, as well as the ability to hit all enemies at once, and a hero to remove the debuffs, uh, debuffs and heal. That basically means use Lilia. Uh, Lilia is a character that uses area effect attacks on her for skill one and healing on her skill two. And by giving a tip to use those characters, what that really means is that you're probably gonna have some kind of a mechanic in the boss that's going to be for placement as well as extra points that's gonna be based on either healing or using area effect attacks. There could also be something based on dissolves and I'll go over the uh, how the additional points could factor in later. Uh, Final Boss Gother also has protectors that can taunt, therefore we recommend using here that can cancel stances. Personally, I'm not really a fan of using that strategy, but a lot of us built out Weinhardt early on. So if you do have a Weinhardt, you could potentially use him here. Uh, there are the strategies that allow them to do it, and Weinhardt does have an eight, two AoE cards as well as the ability to remove stances, which could be helpful. I'm not sure if I will be using Weinhardt, but it is a strategy I could use. Um, the first time this came around, I was using different characters, and I'm not really sure which strategy I would like to implement because I'm not sure how the scoring is going to be based on this fight, and I'll go over how I think it might go in a minute. 
Let's go through. It's going to have lots of different rewards, just like the la the previous final boss over here. As we can see, you're getting a full set of cosmetics for Gother, um, as well as getting chalices, a total of five, f six star chalices, a total of 40 of each type of... Um, uh, demon material as well as a total of 30 UR chests. You can also get uh, a total of looks like Five uh, blue stones as well as 50 anvils So I mean that's okay, and then you get 10 four star blue stones. So that's that's all good um, During this boss battle of course you can get the platinum crown gold crown or silver crown as well as bronze crown um, And looks like the uh, the bronze crown actually got changed from fourth to a hundredth to fourth to tenth So uh, if you did get the bronze crown thing on final boss king for them being the top 100 is a lot easier But now everyone and their grandma unless you're in the top 10 is not going to be able to receive a, uh, a bronze crown They may change this in the future um, Maybe this was a typo and it's supposed to be four to a hundred. Uh, I'm not really sure, but uh, we'll see how it goes uh, going for the top 5%, you're going to get a, a let's see, a 5-star, looks like 5 5-star blue stones as well as 100 anvils. Top 15%, 20 diamonds as well as 2 5-star, uh, 2 SSR pendants, as well as top 30%, uh, 3 of each type of chalice, as well as top 50%, uh, getting 10 diamonds, 5 SSR, SR medals, and final uh, the final two are going to be 5 diamonds, 10 keys uh, for gear gacha, as well as uh, we have 3... Uh, SSR potions as well as three UR chests. So all these rewards are cumulative. So if you do place in top 5%, you get all of them. If you place first, you get everything in the entire game. So that's awesome. Many moons ago, of course, I created a guide on the Seven Daily Sins Great Cross subreddit regarding Final Boss Gother, give you the ideas um, on the stages so you can understand what you need to plan for and what exactly the passives of the boss are, as well as what the mechanics of each stage are. So on phase one, uh, Gother is going to have 6,000 attack, 8,600 defense, as well as 260,000 HP. Uh, his passives are plus two ultimate gauge, reducing damage from counterattacks by 80%, boost damage against Demon Clan by 300%, and then he's also going to boost the attack and defense skills uh, per dead ally by 150%. So that's how much the damage increase is specifically uh, when you ever kill a, a minion. Uh, his skills, he's going to do the same thing as Green SR Gother, where he's going to do that D rank ability on a character, versus, and he's also going to do the same as Red Coin Shop Gother, as well as doing a lot of you know, annoying things for attack seal. Uh, he's using Invasion Arrow boost every other turn, so he's going to go Invasion Arrow, Cora de Doda, Cora de Doda, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, the fodder on the sides, of course, are going to have 7,000 attack as well as 5,200 defense. Uh, so you can see significantly more, more attack than Gother, as well as less defense than Gother, and it uh, looks like a 147,000 versus the 260,000 that Gother has here. Uh, it is definitely easy to kill these guys, so be very careful that you do not. Um, they're immune to all stun, petrify, and freeze. Uh, skills, they're going to have 400, their, their first skill is going to be 400% of their attack as well as ignore defense, so you can't not defend against it. You need high HP to do so, to block it if you wanted to uh, not, die, not die from it. Uh, they're going to increase defense by 20% per turn as well as a taunt stance on turn three. So you have three turns to bring down the boss. If you don't, then you have to uh, wait out some taunt turns for um, for the bosses, and that actually gets very, very annoying. I believe the taunt, the stance is about, uh, I think the stance is two turns for any time for this taunt. I did put it in here. On phase two, uh, he's going to have 916. Uh, uh, Sorry, 9,116 uh, 9, attack, 12,886 defense, as well as 390,000 HP. So significantly more stats in the first phase. Uh, you can see it's like nearly double of what he has in a, on a lot of parts of it. Um, and so it's, it gets much more difficult. Uh, um, his passive abilities are going to have plus two ultimate gauge, reduce damage taken from a counterattack, as well as have the still the same uh, green and demon damage buff. And what he does on this phase, is he removes debuffs on his turn. Um, I believe on the first phase he does that as well, but I just didn't want to put it in both phases here. Um, rem he's also to be immune to all stun, petrify, and freeze, and heals to full if fodder are not damaged. His skills abilities are going to be Nightmare Teller, which is going to see the same as Blue Gother's debuff seal. So um, it, he's just going to do that AoE blanket on everyone where you are not able to use buff or debuff skills. Um, and the second ability is going to be use ultimate damage reduce every every by 40% every three turns. He's going to target a random character on the enemy team and use that 40% uh, ultimate damage reduction. Uh, you're also is also going to do blue SSR Gother and green SSR Gother if you wanted to compare exactly how those debuffs looked as well as what they uh, the skills all entailed. Um, the fodder on this phase are going to have 700,000 HP. So on this phase in particular, they're like nearly impossible to kill. So don't worry about killing the fodder on the stage. Uh, you can do as much damage you like to them if you'd like, but it, it you can't really kill them. Um, the 
they are going to remove buffs and debuffs on Gother's turn, and they're immune to all stun, petrify, and freeze. The skills are going to be lower defense by 20% for three turns when they have a buff on their ability, and uh, they're going to have a weakness based attack that's going to, on turn three, they're also going to use a taunt. So the, if you have any debuffs on your characters, they will do increased damage to you, but I think the weakness factor is three on this one. Um, it might be two, it might be three. I think it's three though. Um, the strategy is really simple on this. You are going to just focus the boss on the first phase and you're going to save up most likely your Lilia cards if you're using a blue Lilia. And then on the, the second phase, after you've cleared the first phase, you're gonna do as much damage as you can to the boss in one turn, as well as roll ultimates back over time. So it gives you it, like this nice little like give and take. There also are some meta teams here, what people were using. Um, the team I used was blue Lizhawk, blue Lilia, as well as blue Arthur and Marmus. The free to play team was Coin Shop King, Coin Shop Dien, uh, Blue Arthur, as well as Red SR Liz. That was another good team that people were using. Uh, people are also using Blue Lilia, CSS Kenora, CSDN, and Blue Jericho, as well as Blue SR Gila, uh, Blue Liz Hawk, Blue Malaska, and Marmus. There were many teams that people were using at this time on Japan that really worked out. It was a very easy fight in comparison to the original fight. Some people were using Demon Meliota, some people were even using Gallon on this fight. It was not a difficult fight to win on. However, it was. Um, it was a fight that you had to do many, many different times for high score if you or to just get the, the runs in. I personally liked the blue Liz Hawk strategy the best uh, initially because you had the most HP. Uh, my thought on this time for placements for the placement rewards here is uh, right now on the global version as well as the Japanese version, we're in kind of an HP based meta. So what I'm assuming is that the total amount of HP that you're going to have at the end of the fights is really going to matter a lot more than the total damage dealt. I believe that might be the case on this final boss go through because it kind of feeds into what they're doing on both versions of the game right now as far as an HP based meta versus a damage based meta giving you a different like uh, gear set to play with giving you different strategies to play with and different like overall styles um, this may be the case on this particular final boss we'll have to see and um, I'll, I'll link this thread in the uh, description below so if you have uh, questions on what you can do for this fight that'll give you some insight on what you can do all right, guys, next thing we're going to go over is the recommended unit list that, uh, from my recollection from JP and talking about those units. Uh, first on the list, there is Giant DN, who is really, really good for this fight because she has an air effect attack, single target attack, and a very strong AoE ultimate. Next up, we have Blue Lizhawk, who is a very, very good unit and possibly one of the best units for this fight, in my opinion, on this one. Uh, reason being is her passive ability is very, very good. On the second phase, you get a large amount of debuffs, which gives your entire team a large amount of HP, making your entire team very, very tanky and making the second phase extremely trivial. Uh, she also has an amplify based single target attack, which give her a large amount of damage versus one target and a cleanse as well as solidify if you do want to protect your team a little bit further. Her ultimate ability does a ridiculous amount of damage toward single target as well, so that could be a possible great unit. Uh, next up on the list, we got Arthur. Arthur is actually going to do a large amount of damage to a single target on his uh, first ability. And this ability is going to have Detonate. And with the recent changes of Detonate on JP moving from 15% to 20%, I don't know if these are going to be added to the global version prior to this fight. But if they are added prior to this fight, he actually might be even better than the original version. He also has an area effect based attack, which is going to be a, a, a normal boost ability on rank 1. But on rank 2 and above, it's actually going to be a debuff skill, which is actually very bad. So. Uh, uh, this is one of the, the drawbacks of this character is that he actually has a debuff based ability on rank two and above. On rank on base two, you do have debuffs that are on the enemy. Um, you have debuffs that come out a lot on that phase, so you have to be a little more careful. And there's a lot of debuff seal. Um, his passive ability is really, really nice for this fight. He's actually going to increase his HP related sets by 6% at the start of the turn um, if the hero takes damage. And that goes up to a total of 30% HP skills from one night recollection. I believe it was like. I thought it was 12, but um, I guess it's 6%. Um, but that gives him an extra 30% HP related stats uh, by the fifth turn, which makes him very tanky and lots of life steal. So that's really, really good. Um, his ultimate ability uh, does a large amount of damage to a single target and decreases defense related stats. So if you do want to use one of his ultimates as well as a follow up ultimate after that, it will do a large amount of damage. 
Next in the list, we got Weinhardt, and Weinhardt is a double AoE air effect character, and he's going to give your entire team, by the end of the fight, about 40% pierce rate, which is very, very nice for your damage. He's also going to have Death Arrow, which is going to inflict, um, remove stances from all enemies, which is really, really nice against on this fight, because it actually may speed up the fight and give you a better team. So this is a good character for that, as well as he has a decent damage on his ultimate as well, and many people have him built out because of my original guides based on farming. Uh, next up we have Gallon. I personally don't recommend this unit because he is a demon and he's going to take increased damage. He does have an area effect attack and single target attack, which is really nice. He also has critical over, which gives himself a large amount of damage by increasing his um, basic stats as well as an amplify single target ability. Personally, I'm not really a huge fan of this unit on this fight because he's going to take additional damage by a large amount. But I have heard people use him and it did work. I don't know why it worked, but it did work. Uh, next we have King. Uh, I heard a lot of people that were using this on this fight always ran into the same problem, and the problem is they ran out of AoE cards because they had too many heal cards and too many fossilization cards. This is probably my least recommended unit. Um, I don't really like King in PvE situations because of this particular thing, but he does have an area effect ultimate that does a large amount of damage. So this in particular would probably be my least recommended unit, but there, if there is a reason, that would probably be, be okay to do. Uh, next on the list we have Demon Meliodas, and this is another low priority unit, but he does synergize very well with Blue Lilia and does a large amount of damage on this AoE. His Corrosion ability is basically a dead card and does nothing on this fight, and his ultimate ability may not even get a debuff prior to using it off. You can use a debuff, I believe, on Gother on the second phase, but it will fall off immediately after uh, the, uh, the boss has his turn. So, of course, you can debuff and attack in the same turn, and it might work. Um, his ability to not get attack sale kind of helps for the first phase because you, there is attack sale in the first phase, but I'm not really sure this would be like a very good unit because, again, he is a demon unit and will take 300 percent increased damage uh next up we have blue gila and blue gila was also a unit that a lot of people had talked about using because she's very similar to the blue lilia character and blue lilia of course will give um an air effect attack and a heal and whereas the uh the jericho does the same thing except she does a cleanse on this rank one as well as a diminished hp heal on rank two and her ultimate ability is also another air effect attack so it gives her no dead cards in this fight and i'm not really sure she would be the best unit in the world for this fight but it is an interesting unit you could use if you end up not pulling for lilia i believe this was the alternate unit for lilia uh, next up, we have uh, for the subunits, you have two options. You, of course, have Blue SSR Jericho, who's going to give your entire blue team 10% attack related stats, as well as Marmus, who is going to give you, um, your entire team 30% HP. In particular, I typically use the Marmus route because Marmus was, was a much more effective route, and I think they might have a much more HP based fight. And the final unit, as we all know, which is the most, uh, the biggest priority unit, which was teased by Netmarble as the best unit for the fight, is going to be Blue Lilia, who has an air effect attack that does ultimate gauge rollback on rank 2 and above, give your entire team more pure stats, and of course, on the rest of her abilities, she has healing as well as cleansing on rank 2, and an ultimate that is also an air effect attack. Now, all these characters put together make yourself a, a nice team, and you can actually figure out which characters you want to use in which situations, but those are the priority units that you can build out for this fight. Alright guys, well, I don't want to give you guys a perfect team build for this yet. Yet because we don't know how the point schema is going to go, but I do want to give you the recommended units that you could potentially have built out already that could help you out when fight, um, building this fight and give you some ideas on what you could do for team builds. I will, have, of course, more guides coming out much later so you guys can see my initial clears on, on doing this for the initial guide, giving you the breakdown of the fight inside the fight as well as a walkthrough of the fight and then going over a high score guide a little bit later in the week, possibly when I've had more time to test. But thank you guys for watching. Have a great day today, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys, of course, didn't enjoy the video, of course, like and subscribe, all the fun stuff. And you guys have a great rest of your day.